I'll first give you a very short recap of my the course that I took last week. So, okay. so uh, basically, um, I told you about the course. It was um, David Beasley's compilers course. Uh, mm -hmm. David Beasley is like a pretty famous member of the Python community. He's very well known there, and. Uh, it was actually from from one of his articles. I learned about generators, and and okay. and, and that's how I know generators. Uh, but any, generator? but anyway, hmm. What is, what is generator? generator? What is generators? Um, hmm, JavaScript actually has generators now. It, it's actually quite similar to async await. So you know okay. async await. Uh, okay. Async await is uh, is actually stolen it is a concept that was stolen from generators okay. in fact whereas async await is meant to well the, the way that async await works is like you just you're just going to pause there until this asynchronous thing comes back and then you mm -hmm. keep you keep going a uh, generator can do that multiple times you can pause and then wait for the thing to come back and then pause again, wait for the thing to come back and pause again, wait for the thing to come back. Uh, it, it, okay. it, a generator can generate a series of values. Uh, okay. and, and you can, yeah, uh, it's, it's a pretty cool concept. Um, it, okay. it's, it's used, uh, it, it's a good fit for some, for the tokenizing phase of a compiler. And we did okay. use that in the course for that uh but anyway so the course um i think overall it was very good for me um uh for s some of the students thought like it was a little too fast for them and okay. they would have they would have like like more time to work on their project instead of getting it cramped into like five days um and it was okay for me because like i've already sort of, I, I'm already experienced with a lot of that, those concepts. Uh, mm -hmm. w one thing I did that was deviating from the rest of the class is I wanted to generate uh, direct assembly code instead of using LLVM. Uh, remember, we talked about LLVM, which is like a layer in between sort of the compiler and the actual machine code. I wanted to go one layer lower than that and, and generate the assembly code directly uh, and mm -hmm. dealing with registers and stuff like that. And I was able okay. to, I was able to do that to an extent. I haven't solved, I, I, I went up to the point where, so your CPU has a fixed number of registers <laughs> That, that are in the CPU. Like a register is like a small, like a memory location inside the CPU that mm -hmm. holds uh, that holds 64 bits of information. For, 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 for 64 bit architectures, mm -hmm. it, each register holds 64 bits of information. And if, okay. if you had an older CPU that was a 32 bit architecture, then a register would only hold 32 bits of information. Uh -huh. um, and your CPU has a fixed number of those. And, and basically, I took the simplistic strategy of uh, every variable I have in my program, I'm going to assign it to a register. Oh, okay. And, and, and the, our programming language was very simple, so it didn't, didn't have strings. It, 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 it just had numbers, uh, floating point numbers, integers, and characters and a character, as we discussed in the Unicode episode, uh, a character can be represented by a number, right? Uh -huh. yep. so, so, so it's still a number in reality. So, so, so all three of those things can be represented as a 64 bit number. Okay. So I just said, uh, I'm just gonna say any variable you define in the program, I'm gonna assign that to a register. And 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 a register. Uh, I can I can sh sh 
so this is the page for David Beasley's courses and the, the one I took was write a compiler I do overall I do recommend this course uh, for I would say for seasoned developers who uh, uh, you, you should be good at debugging <laughs> if you want to take this course <laughs> there will be a lot of debugging um, how much does it it costs like a thousand and two hundred dollars, I believe. Okay. Uh, I would. I. I. I'm, well, I. I don't think I can do it anytime soon. But if it's like a little bit later, maybe. Okay. <laughs> no. Uh -huh. Really small. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. Maybe like a little bit later. Uh, but but I think this definitely sounds really fun. Nice. So. <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, if you want to take it at like a slower pace, then you, you could can also consider learning compilers with my guidance, but then it, okay. it, it would still take a lot of work <laughs> either case, either, either way is going to take a lot of work on your part. Gotcha. Yeah. Cause, cause it, it compilers is a lot of stuff. A uh, compiler is just a lot of stuff. There's no getting around the a lot of work. Um, okay. That's in the five-day course. Yeah, yeah, yes. Cramming it into five days is a little much, um, I think. But, um, yeah. But uh, it, it depends on what you want. Like, it, it, I, I think if you starting out with absolutely no knowledge about compilers and you want to be able to be uh you you want to be able to sort of build your own programming language at the end of the course that might not be totally realistic but but you have the beginnings of that knowledge and then you need to go further on your own after that um okay so what did i wanted to show you oh yeah my compo oh one thing i do want to say is that i throughout this course because the, the the course uses python uh throughout this course i've been using my debugger to debug my problems <laughs> and and it, it has been extremely helpful and and there are bugs in the debugger um that i encountered and there are times when the debugger like we were hitting the limits of what the debugger could do because of the bugs in the debugger but despite that it has been helpful more often than not and 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 like I, as a result of that i had to do very very little print based debugging nice i, I had yeah it, it's just like very like you will not see many print statements littered through my code at all because I just didn't do that all that often because of this debugger. <laughs> yeah, it, it was actually really amazing feeling to, to, to get this kind of experience using this debugger like that often for the first time. Um, anyway, what was I going to show you? Oh, I was going to show you my registers. So these are the examples of the registers that are in an Intel chip. Okay, and they have specific, they have very specific but cryptic names that you probably will not able to memorize <laughs> unless you looked at it a lot. So EBX, uh, and each register has different names, different aliases for if you are, because the a register is like, like there's another name for this, which is RBX, and then there's EBX. And then there's BL. All three of these are referring to the same register, except that the RBX is the 64-bit version of that. And the EBX is the 32-bit version, which means if you use EBX, it's only going to use half of the register. It's going to ignore the other half. And and BL is only going to be like the 8 bytes, eight, eight, sorry, 8 bits of the register. So you're using even less of the register if you write BL. Okay. Um, so so I'm uh, in my case I'm only using 32 bit and 8 bit, so I'm ignoring the 42 bit version and the 16 bit version. I'm only using the 32 bit and the 8 bit. Uh, 
So I've made my registers like this. They have the long name and the short name. <laughs> and then and then when I have variables in my program, like, oh, I don't know. Like this is a program in this programming language that we use in the course. It, it's called Wabbit. So if I, ha if I have a variable or oh, not cons, cons, I don't use registers, but a variable like this, this is X, it's a float. Then I'm going to, I'm going to allocate this variable to a register in, in my list of registers. And also for floating point numbers, you have to use these special registers for floating point numbers. And then there, there are actually not, these, these are invalid. There's only like eight. There's only eight of them. And also I'm skipping the zeroth one because this, the zeroth one has a special use. So I didn't want to collaborate the special use. So I'm going to say these are my general purpose ones that I can use for variables. <laughs> want to assign to which variable like say you have that variable like which one does it go to? It, uh, oh i i put uh, basically i put it in a list and it's a first come first serve it's like a queue what if it's full exactly then then i'm in trouble so and uh, okay. i i haven't gotten to that part yet basically but but uh normally what but basically i went I, I implemented all of this, the assign variables to register until I try to run this program. Oh, not this one, but a similar one that, uh, there's another, it's this one. Until I tried to run this program and I ran out of registers. When I tried to, <laughs> I tried to allocate another register. It's like, no, no more registers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and with the reg like how do you interact with the cpu like what is does they have an api like does Qualcomm have an api to do that uh, no okay so what i did was um i am using a assembler which which it's a thing that converts assembly language to compile binary code so okay. um and i I'll, I'll just run I run my compiler to compile, say, this script. Yeah. Okay, so what it did was it created this dot asm file, which is a is which is code in assembly language. Uh, okay. It it's like a slightly more it's a more humanly readable version of assembly language that I can still read and debug. And then I use the assembler to compile the ASM file to a bin file, which is a binary code that the machine can actually execute. So you run the bin file and it executes the program, outputs that. Yeah. But the ASM file, let's go take a look at that. Um, is here and it looks like this Whip, whoops so <laughs> so to show, to show you what's happening maybe just a little bit um oh is that the memory location like r whatever B? uh yeah so so yeah so this is on the left is the original program on the right is the assembly language program that represents the program on the left. And yeah, the first instruction is, I'm gonna move the value 97, which is the ASCII code for the character A. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna move it into the register called R15B. That That's a register in, in your Intel chip. I'm gonna do okay. the same for B, which is the code for that is 98 move it into the R14B register. And then here, here I'm doing a bunch of comparison because this particular test has to do with the greater than and less, to, like comparing characters. And, and, and so like A less than B should be true. So I'm doing this comp operator 
or in, in comp instruction comparing the value of this register to the value of this register. And and then when you do that, it sets a bit in another in in another register, which will tell you w whether the comparison, you know, was greater than, less than, or equal. And and then and then this set L, it's now in if if you <laughs> it's it's super weird.